Hello everyone, Jeff here with an optional video on where this formula comes from in the dividend valuation model where we're assuming the dividend just remains constant forever. We get this formula where the value of the stock is equal to the dividend divided by the required rate of return which seems to be too simple to be true. Um, remember the idea here is that we are going to be receiving some dividend forever so a value for that stock uh, should be equal to the present value of all of those dividends but D over R doesn't look like present value it looks like, like something that's just too simple so uh, where does this D over R come from um, what we're gonna do is we're going to write out our series of dividend payments which we'll call S for series and uh, you'll notice that what we get if we write this as a present value problem is that first we are going to receive the dividend next year. Uh, since that dividend is received next year we are going to bring it to present value by dividing by 1 plus R. That's our standard present value formula if we were to receive one amount next year when the interest rate is R. Then the following year we are also going to receive that dividend since it's now two years from now, we bring it to present value by dividing by 1 plus r to the 2. In the third year, we're going to receive the dividend again, and we discount that to present value by dividing by 1 plus r to the third, and this goes on forever. So, that's a big mess. How does it turn into that simple thing? What we're going to do is take our entire series and divide every term in it by 1 plus r. If we do that, and let me space this out here, we'll line up the equal signs, that'll make more sense. So we're going to take every term and divide by 1 plus r. The first term is already divided by 1 plus r, so when we divide it by 1 plus r again, what we're doing is causing it to be squared. We're dividing by 1 plus r and 1 plus r again. That's what the exponent 2 does. We are then going to take our second term here, which is divided by 1 plus r to the second, and we're going to divide it by 1 plus r again. That gives us 1 plus r to the third. Temporarily forgot my carrot. And we can keep doing this. The 1 plus r to the third will turn into 1 plus r to the fourth, and so on and so on forever. Okay, now it looks like we have a bigger mess, and yet what we're trying to do is get to the easier formula. So next step, what we're going to do is take the entire series on the first line and subtract the entire series on the second line. If you'll notice, the second term here is the same second term here, my mouse has gone crazy, it's gone off the mouse pad, is the same as the first term here, so these two are the same, this term is the same as this term, and all of the terms after it will be the same as some other term after it. So this would be the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, this would be the fourth, the fifth, the sixth. When we subtract, this gets subtracted off by this, this gets subtracted off by this, everything after it gets subtracted off by everything after it, and the only thing we're left with is d over 1 plus r. All right, algebra, fractions, get rid of fractions. We are dividing some things here by 1 plus r. We're going to multiply now through by 1 plus r to get rid of the fractions. Uh, we have an s. We're going to multiply it by 1 plus r. We have an s over 1 plus r. When we multiply by 1 plus r, the 1 plus r's go away. It leaves you with s. Similarly, on the right-hand side, d over 1 plus r, when we multiply by 1 plus r, cancels the 1 plus r's. d. Now let's distribute this s. s times 1 is 1s, plus s times r is rs. We are subtracting s, that equals d. We have an s and a minus s, those go away. We're left with r, s is equal to d. And then what we can do is divide both sides by r. Our series s is equal to d over r. Look at that, that's our formula. 
So we took big series of present value mess. We did a little trick here so that when we subtracted, almost everything went away. Then we did some algebra and got a really simple formula. So the point here is that this is a present value problem. It just happens to be that through a bunch of algebra, uh, it turns into a very simple thing, which is kind of neat.